So you are the lucky owner of an NVIDIA NVIDIA Shield TV Pro or one of the cylinder versions and it is one of the best streaming devices on the market. But there is always room for improvement at the end of the day. So today we're gonna to be going over some of the top settings that you can toggle on and off to improve your overall performance on the NVIDIA Shield TV and customize your experience just a little bit more. Before we get started guys, give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below. And let's just go ahead and get right into things. So the first thing I have to make sure you do before we go any farther, because guess what? I am bad for this as well. It takes, you know, I, I forget to do this all the time because I don't always have auto updates on. Let's update our device to make sure it's the most current version. Now the most current version is 9.1.1. So just go to device preferences, go to about, and then go to system upgrade. And you can check for upgrade. And this will tell you if you're at the most current version. So you can see right here, your system is up to date, 9.1.1. I literally just updated it today because this is my demo device. And you can always press check now if you need as well. But now you'll have access to the most up-to-date menu depending on what you're doing. Now we're gonna be going over everything from developers options to all the in-between settings and really just going through in detail every section of the settings menu because I think that's very important and going over some other tips and tricks including some community suggestions, okay? Um, because a lot of people in the community wanted to know. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the about section. Now we already talked about system upgrade. You can also change your device name if you want. I don't think that's necessary, but you could change it to like UGT Shield if you want. You can reboot your device from here. Now that's essentially just going to be a restart, right? Turns itself off quickly, turns itself back on. You can also power it on and off, which your remote doesn't do, by the way. Your remote puts it to sleep. There's two big differences between that and when it sleeps in power off mode and when it is just in sleep. So make sure you realize that as well. There's some status information. There's really nothing else you have to know here. Now, the only other thing you should check, check out is the build section. Now, the only reason you have to check this out is because when we click on it, five to six times, it's going to give you the option to become a developer. And this gives you access to the secret developers menu. So just click on that. If it says you're already a developer, then you'll already have that menu accessed. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit later in the video, so stick around for that. So we're gonna go back now. The first section we really wanna talk about is display and sound. This is where you can customize a few of the AI upscaling, et cetera, options. So if we go to resolution, for example, you can pick which resolution you want. Now you can see mine is locked at 1080p 60 hertz because of my uh, current monitor setup. Depending on what TV you have it on, et cetera, you'll be able to change that as well. So you can check out resolution right here. Now there's also AI upscaling. Now this is an interesting one. Because I've had people completely shit on me because I say I don't notice the difference between AI enhanced and not having it on. I don't think it's an amazing revolutionary feature. Now what it's supposed to do is take lower quality content and kind of upscale it a little bit to improve the looks, right? Um, so you can have that on. There's no harm of having it on and any supported content. So I believe Netflix, Prime Video, those kind of official apps are going to support AI upscaling and it's going to you know try to improve the 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 details a little bit people have said it looks more vibrant again i just don't notice a huge difference there's also detail enhancement same kind of idea when you're using your device there's geforce now upscaling so so when you're using this though it can affect the responsiveness of the game so make sure you keep that in mind remember geforce now you're essentially streaming all of your games right it's all just cloud gaming um, so up to you if you want to have that on or off and then there's demo mode which is going to allow you to check out and see what it looks like while you're upscaling content so again up to you if you want to check that out Okay, now power control does have a few different settings in here we have to check out now the names kind of speak for themselves so when you touch the button on your shield it's going to turn on the tv that's this option so if you don't want that take it off so that's when the shield wakes up when the shield wakes set tv input to shield so if you have it on a different input so say you were playing nintendo switch you press the button your shield wakes up it's going to switch to your nvidia shield i like that feature okay 
turn off TV. So when you press the off button on your Shield remote, that is going to automatically turn off your TV as well when your Shield is asleep. When you wake your shield up, your TV powers on, or when your TV powers on, the shield powers on. Okay, when your TV powers off, the shield sleeps. Okay, so another really good feature to save you power. When TV inputs change from shield, it sleeps the shield automatically. And when TV inputs change to shield, it wakes the shield, okay? So it's up to you if you want these on or off. These are just features to make it a little bit easier. So anytime you're using your shield, you're using it. But when you decide to put it to sleep, it automatically turns everything off as well. So you can toggle these as you want. I just leave them alone. Um, as for these two options, if you're setting up a projector or a soundbar, you can play around with those yourself. There is some advanced display options. So there is match content color space and this switches between rec 2020 and rec 709 so rec 2020 is going to offer a wider color space than rec 709 would so if you want that to automatically switch between you can go ahead and activate that i think it's a good thing to activate overall there's also custom display mode um, which is based on what you're using again you can go through this and play around with this there's not too much here that you really need to play around with um, you can filter by refresh rate as well, filter by color space, and then also there's a bunch of different display modes here as well that you can touch. Display HDR content when available. I would obviously suggest having that on and adjust for overscan. Use the setting to adjust the picture size on the TV to provide their own settings. So if your TV is not matching the size of your screen, you can go in here and you can go up and down until it matches your content here. So you can see as I'm going down, that screen is shrinking. As I'm going up, that screen is going up, okay? So just a nice little setting there. So night listening mode is a good one to turn on if at night you want the audio levels to adjust based on the content. So that way you're not getting these completely loud levels, these completely quiet levels, right? Everything is match levels. So nice little feature there. Um, volume controls, this is just use uh, your TV remote to control the volume as well. You can play around with that. Um, there is some advanced settings, but honestly not really anything here that most of you would have to play around with. You can match audio levels, including Dolby audio levels um, and a few other small things here. I don't mess around with the audio much, so I don't know if there's any uh, audio files here that are completely insane about that stuff, but for me, it's not really a, a, a big uh, go for it. Now, as for system, there's not a ton we really have to look around at. There is LED brightness, um, so that should be active for your system itself. So if you look at the top of your shield, I'm looking at it now, as you change that, it's going to change that just a little green LED at the top. I just keep it off. If you want like that glow, keep it on. There is processor mode. Now this is up to you if you want to max out performance or optimize performance. I keep it on maxed out. I don't think it really makes too big of a difference in the long run for majority of people. That would be up to you. You can change the fan mode if you want it cool or you want to keep it quiet. So that's how powerful that fan would work. If you have it on max performance, probably put it on cool just to make sure. Um, USB mode. So based on when you're using your USB, right? It may transfer files, etc better if you have it on max performance i just put it on auto i don't think it's going to make a big difference at the end of the day um usb port further from hdmi so that is the usb port power always on or off during sleep so if you have anything plugged into there that you need running all the time like a keyboard remote and you want to turn it on with the keyboard remote this would have to be always on and same kind of idea here off during sleep Okay, that's just based on the HDMI. Now, coming up next, I think we should go into storage and talk about storage. Now, the storage space on the NVIDIA Shield, we all know, is not amazing, right? It's not the old pro models where you got 500 gigabytes, right? You only have 12 terabytes or 12 gigabytes. Here, you can at least get a breakdown of where the majority of your storage is going. So if you have a ton of different apps, you can go in and delete specific apps that are using a ton of space on your device to make a little bit more room. Now, you can scan for media automatically when you put in a USB device or a storage device of some sort. Transfer files to a computer using USB. So if you turn this on, 
right? You can access shield folders on PC using a USB, okay? So this would basically allow you to connect your shield to a PC as a media device. So an interesting little setting there that I don't think most people are really gonna play around with overall. Now, if you click transfer files over local network, you can actually just wirelessly transfer your files. There's a process you have to do to do that. We're not gonna go over that today. Now you can also mount your network storage. So this can be useful if you have a large amount of personal media that you wanna share on your device. You can go ahead and mount storage. So this would be such as a Plex uh, server, et cetera. You can go ahead and set that up. It's not a crazy huge process. Now there is the home screen. There's not a ton you have to do here. You can customize channels, which will just get rid of certain of those kind of trailer channels as you're moving down in your shield. So I can go ahead and show that right here actually. So these would be the channels right here that you're getting rid of as I'm scrolling down. So you can customize these based on the ones you wanna customize. So actually the option is right at the bottom there as well just to make things a little bit easier. So that can just help make your home screen a little bit cleaner uh, while you're using it, in my opinion. I usually turn off video previews and audio previews. Those are just those kind of running trailers that you see on your NVIDIA Shield home screen. I find it annoying. Now you can also reorder your apps and games below that. So you can completely customize and move around a lot of the different apps. So the ones you use more recently, the ones that you use uh, more often, you can move to the front so they're easily accessible while you use them. So nice little option there as well. Let's get back in device preferences. Um, you can do the same thing with your games and then they just have some open source licenses we don't really have to check out there. Now there is keyboard and autofill. That will help you autofill while you're typing. So you can see your current keyboard. They have different keyboard options, okay? Um, so that's the keyboard that pops up when you're using, so the virtual keyboard. There's Gboard settings, so this will allow you to switch between languages. If you want need to switch to like Arabic, it looks like they have Chinese. Um, looks like they have hundreds of languages in there that you can change up. Um, that's really all you have to change up there uh, in terms of Gboard settings. You can manage keyboards depending on what device you're using and virtual keyboards. And there is physical keyboards as well, which we don't have one put in, so we don't have to worry about it. And then current autofill service. So this will be basically your username passwords, I believe, which you can have them autofill while you're using it. Now we're gonna go back. There's a lot more settings we wanna go through, guys. But before we go any further, if you wanna protect yourself while you're online, Make sure you consider checking out ExpressVPN. Now, ExpressVPN is going to give you peace of mind while you're streaming. If you are streaming, you need to get ExpressVPN. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Down below, I have literally the best possible discount for my subscribers, 70% off. You can install it directly on your shield and start protecting yourself now. This is gonna bring you to my customized discount where you can get a 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee, guys. You can even unlock services such as Netflix and Prime Video. Very simple, guys. Just wanted to go over that quickly. I also get a kickback, so I do appreciate it. All right, so we have screensaver, guys. If you want to change up your screen screensaver, uh, you know, click out, start now, sleep now, etc. when you're using it. And when you want the screensaver to start based on when you're inactive, you can do that here. Uh, I don't think there's a lot I have to go over there. Um, we do also have energy saver. So this will turn off your display after 20 minutes of being inactive. I like to set it at 20 minutes because I find five minutes too quick if I'm going to make popcorn, etc. Keep that at 20 minutes in my mind. And then always turning screen off during media playback. So I think that means when the media playback ends, it will automatically turn off. That's how I kind of decipher it. If I'm wrong about that, you can let me know. There is location service options. We're gonna leave that alone. There's not a lot you have to touch there. There is a built-in Chromecast option as well. So let others control your cast media. So the built-in Chromecast allows you to cast media from like your tablet, your phone directly on your Nvidia Shield. It's pretty simple, guys. Um, so if you wanna play around with that, you can have that here. I believe you need the app in order to do that. So you can figure that out yourself. Now there's just a few more things I think we have to go over. And a lot of that is inside of, yes, developer's option. That is the last thing we have to really go over for you to learn more about your Nvidia Shield TV settings. Now, before we do, guys, there is 
factory reset, which if you're having a ton of issues with your Nvidia Shield, this basically puts it back like it is brand new. That's the easiest way to explain it. So it will reset it like it's a brand new device. Now, accessibility is one that a lot of people asked me about before. This is a great spot if you need text to speech, if you need to raise the text, if you need to raise captions, um, and if, there's some other options in here as well. So if we go into captions, this here you can customize basically the caption language, the text size, um, the colors of it, right? So if you want different colors, if you want larger text size for captions, uh, and then also display. So there you go, it shows you what the captions will look like. Um, so if you need to customize that based on your own, uh, you know, what you need out of captions, this is where you're gonna have to do that, obviously. Um, so here we can see kind of me customizing it a little bit, text color, right? Um, so I know a lot of people do use captions, and if you have trouble reading certain things, this would be a great spot to play around with it. There's also high contrast text, which you can kind of see it switch in the background. That's just going to make it pop a little bit more. That's really it. There is text to speech. So this should basically turn your text to speech so you can listen to what you're typing. Um, so you can have that on or off. Uh, and kind of utilize that if you need to. There's a few things here that I don't think we really have to play around with. There is accessibility's shortcut, which I, I honestly don't know what that does. Um, there are services that you can install inside of accessibility. For example, I have a mouse toggle installed. Um, different devices have different accessibility services. I'm not sure what every single one of them does. So you will have to, again, play around with that based on your own experiences. Now, let's get to that good, good. Let's get to developer's options. Developer options. You should make sure you know what you're changing. So if you mess it up, you can always change it back. There is a ton of stuff to play around with in here. And I don't want to go over all of it because I think it's just a lot to go over. But for you, you should go through and look at some different settings and see if there's some of these that you can play around with. Maybe I'll do a better video going over what every single one of these developer options goes over. Um, however, I just don't want to do it right now. It's going to make this video long as hell. There is some of my favorites in here, such as animation scales, which I like turning off. So that's just how it transitions when you go in between menus and you're opening apps up. So you know how you open it, like when we close this menu, you see how it just closes right away. If we go to transitions here let me find that again so if we go here and we go to window animation and we turn this to 10x let's turn them all to 10x you're gonna watch once we close this menu look at that transition so those are the transitions i'm talking about that change based on this that's why i like to have it off because it makes for really quick really quick transitions in and out of menus and in and out of certain things you're doing. So highly suggest just turning those off. Some people like it at 0.5, 1x. That's just like where I like to leave it at. Now that's everything for developers option, guys. I really want to leave that one alone because I know there's a lot you can play around with yourself. I will do an option going over the full developers options and what every single menu and setting does inside of there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this one here on the Fire TV Cube 3. I'll see you in the next one.